Good morning, good morning. The Committee on the Budget and Government Operations is called to order. Pursuant to applicable law and my determination that attendance by remote means is necessary because of an in-person an in-person meeting is not practical or prudent due to the declared public health disaster caused by COVID-19. This meeting is conducted by video conference. We will now have a roll call to establish quorum. Please note that your yes or present response will be deemed a yes vote when this quorum roll call is used as a reference vote for later items. Please uh, unmute your microphones. Thank you. Vice Chair Silverstein. Alderman King. Alderman Hairston. Present. Alderman Sawyer. Alderman Mitchell. Present. Alderman Harris. Alderman Salaski Garza. Alderman Thompson. Present. Alderman Cardenas. Alderman Quinn. Here. Cardenas here. Thank you. Salaski Garza here. Gotcha. Thank you. Alderman Moore. Alderman Curtis. Present. Alderman O'Shea. Alderman Brookins. Here. Alderman Rodriguez. Present. Alderman Tabaris. Present. Alderman Scott. Present. Alderman Burnett. Present. Alderman Irvin. Yeah, Alderman Irvin's present. Alderman Talia Farrell. Alderman Raboris. Alderman Wagesback. Here. Alderman Austin. Alderman Ramirez Rosa. Present. Alderman Viegas. Alderman Mitz. Alderman Spizzato. Nick Spizzato is here. Alderman Napolitano. Alderman Riley. Present. Alderman Smith. Alderman Tunney. Present. Alderman Kappelman. Alderman Osterman. Present. Chairman Dowell's here. We have a quorum. We have 20 members. Chairman, Alderman Harris is here. Thank you. Ald and thank Sawyer's you. here. Thank you. Silverstein is here. Alderman Sawyer, Vice Chair Silverstein, Alderman Harris. Um, is Alderman, here. King is, Alderman King is here. Alderman King, gotcha. Alderman Smith. Alderman Smith. All right, that's it. We have 25 uh, members present. We do have a quorum. Um, we've been notified that there are no public speakers that have signed up for comment this morning. Uh, so this concludes the public comment period. We did yeah. however, receive one written public comment from the Sustainable Inglewood Initiative expressing their support for the CTA real property transfer tax fund increase. Item number one on the agenda this morning, this was sent electronically to everyone. And Alderman Mitz, I see you and you will be- Thank you. Sports forum. Thank you, Madam Chairman. We will begin with the approval of the December 2021 monthly Rule 45 report. Uh, this report was sent electronically to everyone. If there are no questions, can I get a motion to recommend approval? of the report by the affirmative Rodriguez. the members present for the roll call to determine quorum. Rodriguez so moves. Alderman Rodriguez so moves, hearing no objection, so ordered. We have two items on the agenda this morning. The first item on the agenda is an ordinance concerning an amendment to the annual appropriation ordinance year 2021 regarding CTA real property transfer tax fund increase. The ordinance will be explained by Budget Director Susie Park, and uh, we'll take questions and from committee members and non-members after the presentation. Do we have any non-committee members here that need to be recognized? Um, Budget Director Parks. Thank you. Um, 
And good morning, Chairman Dahl, Vice Chairman Silverstein, and members of the Committee on the Budget and Government Operations. Item number one is a request to amend the 2021 Annual Appropriation Ordinance to increase the amount for the CTA Real Property Transfer Tax Fund, also known as Fund 0B09. This is authorized under state statute and the city's municipal code. The CTA Real Property Transfer Tax is a supplemental tax of $1.50 per $500 on the transfer of real property in the city, specifically for the purpose of providing financial assistance to the CTA. As is required under both the state statute and municipal code, funds collected for the CTA portion by the city shall be provided back to the CTA. The 2021 budget for this fund, which was initially impacted by the pandemic in 2020, was $49.9 million. However, due to the increase in property sales in 2021, collection of the tax has also increased, and as a result, we are requesting approval to increase the appropriation by $26.1 million, resulting in a total revenue of $76 million and the expense line to $75.5 million. The budgeted expense line for the city's administration portion of the fee, which is 500,000 remains as was originally budgeted. Uh, thank you for your consideration of this item. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have regarding this. Thank you, Director Park. I also want to acknowledge for the quorum, we've been joined by Alderman O'Shea, Alderman Taliaferro, and Alderman Raboyrus. See if we have anyone have questions. Um, Alderman Wagesback, followed by Alderman Osterman and Alderman Tunney. Thanks, Chairwoman. Um, Director Park, uh, on the day asked for what um, some of these funds are being used for capital projects. I know it can't be used for personnel, but um, do we have more details on that? And there's somebody here from the CTA that can. Uh, give us a general uh, idea of what they're going to be using the additional uh, funds for. Um, so I could get through the chair more specifics around, you know, once this gets to CTA, um, if there's a specific purpose for it. So I, I will get that through the chair because we don't have a representative from CTA here. Okay. Yeah, that would be really helpful because the CTA, we've we've been asking, I know, for uh, information when they're asking for TIF funds. We've been asking for information um, on a lot of other topics that I know aren't related to the capital fund, but just the lack of um, response and the lack of straightforwardness from the CTA recently has been a little alarming. So um, whatever you can get through the chair, I think that would be helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Chairwoman. Uh, thank you, uh, Alderman Wagesback, I think um, what we could do is uh, pass this out of committee, but not bring it to the floor on the 25th if uh, we don't get the information. I think that's an appropriate. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't want to uh, hold it up today. I agree with you. No, we're not going to hold it up today if we, you know, if the committee will support that. But um, we definitely can get that information before we actually vote on it on the 25th. 26, Alderman Osterman. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair and uh, Budget Director. I, I'd like to ask, I think uh, I support this today, but I, I would, I think it's important for this committee and the budget office, I think, um, to engage with the CTA to look at the transfer tax and the way we fund this now. I was in the General Assembly at a time when, um, when we enacted this provision and it was due to rising um, fare increases and um, I'll call it financial instability at the CTA. I think given some of the federal money, um, the, the RPM TIF that's put in place, the capital bill at the state, um, I think it would be timely for us to kind of regroup and look at the finances of the CTA and is this necessary moving forward? I think um, utilizing this money um, that comes from housing real estate transfers um, to address housing within Chicago might be a better use um, in trying to find a way that the CTA could be more sustainable using other revenue streams. We've got a Democratic governor, uh, General Assembly. Um, so I think I would ask that you would engage and I think the budget director and some members of this committee would be happy to be part of those conversations. It would involve a statute change at the state, but I think 
now would be a time to take a look at um, us doing this in the future. So thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Alderman Austin. And Alderman Tunney? Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, so, uh, Susie, would you walk me through um, the the where the 25 million you talk about the real estate market and the transactions and stuff, but can you be a little more granular on where this increase literally is coming from based on the market of real estate? In so, yes. Um, so as you may know, um, the city has uh, the real estate transfer tax. Um, you know, there are two portions of this. Uh, the city's portion, um, which I know we've talked about during budget, is $3.75 for every $500. And that's applied on the buyer side of a sale. Similarly, there's the CTA portion, um, which is $1.50, as I mentioned, for every $500. And that's uh, put on the seller side of the sale. Now, um, as we know, you know, home sales and property sales has increased in 2021. This did go down in 2020. It was impacted by the pandemic. So we lowered um, the budget for 2021, you know, thinking that it's the same pattern, but it has uh, gone above uh, what we expected. And so that's why we've come back for this increase, especially because on the expenditure side, um, mostly because once we collect the funds, um, we need approval to increase the expenditure line in order to provide that those funds, um, which are required to be provided to the CTA uh, for the end of the year. So uh, let's go back a, a few years. So let's say, uh, give me the three-year pattern. So, sure. um, so it was this, pandemic and then 21. Mm -hmm. So in 2018, we uh, received about 72 million. Um, in 2019, it went down to about 62 million. In 2020, it went down to 51 million. Um, and then in 2021, it's back up to about 76 million. So, you know, you had, it has been declining um, and, you know, the pandemic further declined it, but this last year, it's gone above, you know, where we were even in 2018. So we're make, asking for that adjustment now. Okay, so back to somewhat normalization. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, and you know, I, I don't think uh, Chairman Osterman was on the on the state legislature at the time, but um, obviously anyone knows that CTA is hemorrhaging on on fair revenues. Um, and yes, we have federal monies, we have some state monies, but Specifically with uh, the rail TIF, just to just to reiterate to my colleagues, um, that money I think it was approximately close to two billion uh, came on the last day of the Obama administration. The the red purple line modernization, and the problem was, and that's why we have a TIF, is because the state did not come through with their they're 25%. Ergo, we developed this TIF, which was the only way to leverage the federal money. So I, I'm, you know, I'm unimpressed with what happened that caused us to create this massive TIF on the North side. Um, and I also agree with my North side colleagues that the CTA has been, you know, um, difficult to work with. I'll just say that at best. But that but for the state inaction under the Rauner administration, we came up with this TIF, which I think is going to be, as has been predicted, uh, that the monies going into this TIF are very generous in relation to in, into the budget. But that's also for future capital projects on the red purple line modernization. So, you know, it's it's a long story, but um, you know, I, I, I agree the CTA sometimes think that they're, they don't need to work with their aldermen as, as, as well as they should and or be accountable. So with that, I would agree on. So, but I, I, now that I get the history of this, I, you know, I'm certainly going to be supportive of it. Thank you, Chairwoman. Thank you, Alderman Tunney. I want to acknowledge uh, Alderman Cardona has joined us as well. Um, Alderman Riley, followed by Alderman Thompson, followed by Alderman King. Alderman All right. Thank Riley. you, Chairman. Thank you, Chairman Dow. Uh, I just wanted to follow up on where Alderman Osterman and Alderman Tunney left things, and that is 
I'm disappointed that the CTA is not here today as they're going to be the beneficiaries of, of this appropriation. Um, and I think that kind of is an indication of how they approach aldermen generally lately. And so I want to be also put down the list of people who are not satisfied with the level of outreach and communication. Um, and I know that the real estate property transfer tax portion for CTA predates this administration. Um, I've always had uh, kind of a fundamental issue with that mechanism generally, because as Alderman Tunney pointed out, uh, while we send revenue to CTA, we have no control whatsoever of, over how they spent that money. And um, ridership is down, the, the, the system's having a difficult time, but this is precisely the time for them to be communicating to the city council on how they're going to do things better, restore ridership, confidence in the safety of the system, make meaningful investments, et cetera. And there really isn't uh, a regular line of communication that I can depend on. Yet, you know, here we are getting ready to send more money over to CTA that we can't control the outcomes with. And they're not even here to explain how it'll be used. That's frustrating to me. So I, I'm not going to jam this up either. Um, but I do hope, even though they're not here, CTA is listening. Because um, this is not how you approach, it, approach, you know, approach a legislative body when you're seeking an appropriation increase. So uh, thank you, Chairman. That's all I've got. Thank you, Alderman Riley. Alderman Thompson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I, I, too, echo all of the sentiments of my uh, colleagues. Uh, I guess I, I have a question for Ms. Park is, why are we doing this? Why aren't they doing this during budget season? Why didn't we account for this? We have a full budget season. The chairman uh, does a fantastic job of organizing that. Why, are, why is this new now? Um, I think, you know, this was beyond even what we estimated um, when we did our year in estimates during budget season. Um, you know, we don't, I don't know if this will continue. We did increase the budget for this specific fund for 2022. Um, higher, you know, back to kind of in the uh, range that it has been. Um, but, you know, I think this was unanticipated. Uh, even this has even exceeded our year end uh, estimates um, for this fund. And so, you know, because we're required to remit it, you know, we're, we are asking to do this uh, for year end. So you said we're required to remit it. Explain yes. that again. Under state statute, um, yeah. the money that's collected for the CTA portion, we have to provide to CTA. Back, back um, to the CTA. And so, you know, as we were doing end of year and doing our year end estimates, you know, this is higher than what we even estimated it to be. So that's why we are here, um, you know, asking for approval to, to be able to change the expense side so that we can make this payment to CTA. Okay, so our, our expense, and I get that, this is just a pass-through for us or for the CTA. Yes, we collect it um, and then we provide it to CTA. Okay, our portion of the CTA, okay, because this is only the CTA's portion, yes. but our portion respectfully would be increased as well because of this increase. Uh, generally- So are we out of whack in our own budget then? Uh, it's within the same fund. Um, you know, it's, it's generally 1%. Um, so the budget for that was about 500,000. I mean, in theory, it could go up another, uh, 150. If, if we chose to c collect this admin fee, I think it's because it's year end. Um, you know, we didn't adjust that line, but it is adjusted for 2022 with the higher amount. Oh. Okay, we can have a, a conversation. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about our, our portion. Of oh, of the whole real estate transfer tax? Correct. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, I see your point there. Um, so that is higher. So the, the, city's reg, the city's portion of the real estate transfer is higher. But, you know, I do want to remind um, members of the committee that, you know, we have still have other revenue that's coming in below expectations. And so, you know, as we're kind of doing year end um, and seeing where all of our revenues come, we are, you know, keeping track of that. Right. I just want to point out, unlike this, and I'm not, I, I, we don't know what the CTA is doing with their money, but I'm a firm believer just because revenue is up doesn't mean you have to then increase your expenses. We might have savings. Perhaps we could pay down debt. Correct. So we're not, so we're not adjusting fund 100. We're not adjusting the city's budget, but because we have to make this payment, 
um, is the only reason we're coming to council today to. I understand that. I, I'm only making the point with, that, with our own because our, ours is going to be up as well. Sure. I, I, respectfully that there's other funds that potentially aren't increased. Um, but I just want to be cognizant of that as well. Just because revenue is up doesn't mean you have to increase your expenses to meet your revenues. No, I agree. So. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Alderman Thompson. Alderman King, followed by Alderman Irvin. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I agree that the uh, you know, CTA should let us know how they're going to spend it. And I appreciate that the chairman's going to make sure that that happens. Um, just in general, following up on the real estate transfer tax, for this particular portion, you said we're about half a million. That's our fee. And did you mention what our um, what the increase in real estate transfer tax is for us in the city in general? Um, so overall, we are um, over over what yeah. we have budgeted. Um, right no, now, I heard, I heard December, that part. Uh, it's about 181 million. Um, and that's through mid December. So we'll see kind of what happens, you know, where it ends up for the end of the year. Um, but we are over uh, in, in real estate transfer tax for this year. So it, about 181 million. You said. Is what the total is going to be. The budget was about okay. 124. So I would say maybe 60 million. Okay, 60 million increase uh, over. over in yes. So I, I, I would love to explore, and I think we've talked about this before, um, you know, kind of adjusting real estate transfer tax at the state level, because I think it is a form of sustainable progressive revenue. Um, and so I'd like to be a part of a discussion. I think we've, we've talked about that before, just, you know, outside of this, and we can talk about, you know, uh, from a city perspective, you know, where that goes. I think housing is, uh, Chairman Osterman met, uh, mentioned is is obviously um, a place where it could go, but we, we should have a real conversation about that. And I just wanted to uh, take this opportunity to express that. So can we talk yes, about thank you? Yes, part? I okay. will follow thank up you. with you. Um, regarding All right. That. All right. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Alderman King. Alderman Irvin, followed by Ar Alderman Cardenas, followed by Alderman Hairston. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, um, can you hear me? I'm sorry. Uh, computer, yes, can you hear me? Hear you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I, I guess this uh, we we're you're telling us that we have to remit this money to uh, CTA. Is there a point where we have to remit this money, or what happens if we don't remit this money? If we're in a space where uh, we're not comfortable, as we don't know what's going to happen with the funds, and we have some other an unanswered questions. Um, so under statute, you know, the timeline is as soon as practically able to. Um, so, you know, I think we want to follow um, what the municipal code has uh, requested. Um, you know, I think that I will get through the chair uh, kind of what CTA's uh, use will be uh, for this additional funding. Um, and then, you know, I'm happy to have a discussion with you if you have any further questions. I, it just sounds like the overall the, the, there's some concerns around CTA and what they're doing or not doing and the lack of communication uh, with this body and, and with us individually and collectively. And um, I, I'm a little disappointed and, and I've had some personal experiences with CTA as well that, you know, it just don't add up. But yet, you know, you show up looking for help, looking for assistance. They have asking us for TIF money. They're asking us for any and everything that they feel that, that they need, but there doesn't seem to be a two way street here. So that is that is the concern. And uh, and, and maybe, you know, uh, through either Chairman uh, Dow or Chairman Brookings that we, we may need to bring those folks in. Maybe they don't feel they need to talk to us. I, I, I don't know. But um, this this just doesn't seem to be, you know, right for another body to uh, I would proceed to be just disrespect us in such a way. And here we're still having to send them send them funds. So. Uh, and Chairman, whatever do you decide, I definitely will, will support uh, in your uh, well, Chairman Irvin, um, I said uh, earlier that I would uh, ask the committee to uh, pass this today, but we will. But I'm going to hold this until we have uh, answers on the use of the funds. First off, and and you know perhaps we can talk to all the. I mean, Chairman 
uh, Brookings um, about maybe a hearing that he can do uh, with CHA or maybe have IGA set up something with aldermen who have some concerns with uh, CTA um, for the future. Okay, thank you very well. I will follow that direction. Thank you much. All right. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Alderman Cardenas. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, gee, I, di I didn't know this, uh, this many folks, colleagues were gonna be speaking on the same issue. Um, CTA is terrible at communications. Um, um, there's no grand plan. Uh, my stations are dilapidated, uh, badly uh, managed. Um, and uh, as a protest, I'm, I'm a no, we're gonna take a word on this, I'm a no on this. I, I think no money should go to CTA unless there's true accountability and management um, clearly outlines uh, uh, to the council uh, a new method of management. Uh, this is pre-pandemic levels. This is pre-pandemic before, um, you know, that we hardly communicate nowadays in person. Um, so CTA has gotten federal money. The CTA uh, will get state money and now we'll get, and now we'll get uh, additional funding from, from the city. And yet we, we rarely uh, uh, talk to CTA, rarely have any communications with CTA. And rarely there's any accountability at any level on crime, on public safety. Um, and it's time that, that we took a stand in this council to bring them and have management before us to explain to us exactly what's going on in CTA. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Cardenas. Um, Alderman Hairston. Uh, thank you. Alderman Garza. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, in, in, in a strange world, um, I ac actually agree with Alderman Cardenas. Um, we, Director Parks, how many times have you appeared before uh, City Council, the Budget Committee? Um, many. <laughs> uh, many, right. And usually when you appear, there are questions, especially when it involves another agency. Um, and we always end up backtracking. Why did you not think that maybe you should have somebody from CTA appear before the budget committee today? Um, I apologize. I, you know, this is money. This is a fund that has existed um, in the budget for a long time. Um, it is under state okay, statute. That is not. And, and that I, is not what I. No, I understand your question. Um, you know, no. I, you know, I, we will work with CTA to get a better right. understanding of how, you know, where these funds will be uh, used. But don't you think that it is the city council's responsibility to ask questions as to how money will be used? How city money, taxpayer dollars will be used? Um, yes. So wouldn't somebody that has appeared before the budget committee over a, a number of years think it prudent to have someone who is going to be spending those dollars appear before the council during budget during during the budget committee hearing um i apologize that cta is not here you know we will get that information as requested but director I, parks yes director parks this is not the first time we've had a conversation this way and it's always i apologize and we will get back to you i apologize and we will get it through the chair so I would think that someone that has appeared before this committee would say, somebody's gonna ask the question. And instead of saying, I'm gonna get back to them, how about I, I bring it before them? And the reason that you don't do it is because you don't respect the members of this council. And that's the council, that's our fault. That is our fault because we don't demand more of you. I have yet, since to get a return call from CTA. I agree with everything my colleagues say. And yet we demand nothing from CTA. And oh, okay, well, we'll just pass it and then they'll get back to us. And we do this over and over and over again, not just with CTA, but with, with other city departments. And my question to my colleagues are, when are we gonna stop? 
When are we going to stop it? So, Madam Chair, I am a no. Thank you, Alderman Harrison. Alderman Garza. Thank you, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Director Park, for being here. Um, I appreciate it. I had to echo what my colleagues are saying. Uh, to give money um, and then ask questions later is, I think, not a good practice. CTA is poor on communications. I. They don't call me back either. Dover Carter should be here, um, president of the Amalgamated Transit Union. And I'm going to tell you why. They're, his members are being assaulted. They are being, um, they don't have correct PPE. They are begging. I'm hearing from the workers as chairman of workforce development all across the city on CTA is not upholding. They're not protecting their workers. So for me, I'm a no because I need to know where this money's going. I just had a bus driver assaulted in my ward last week by a passenger and no one's doing anything to protect the workers. So I have to know what is where this money is going. What are they doing with it? Um, they, they came to me for TIF money. I, I, you know, it's, they keep asking for money, 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 but we don't know where it's going. So. I don't feel comfortable with this at all right now. I think Dover Carter from he should be here too to answer questions in regards to his workers and how, how this money is going to be spent. So I'm a no, um, Chairman Dahl. Thank you, Alderman. I um, also want to acknowledge we've been joined by Alderman Beal. Uh, Alderman Thompson. Thank you, uh, Madam. Chair, I, I just wanted to follow because I, I, I'm listening to my colleagues and I, I too am concerned about the spending, but it, again, I want to go back to Ms. Park. We, by state statute, I just want to make sure, this isn't discretionary. This is, we collect the, the transfer tax and then we're the repository that then has, by law, we have to give it to CTA like the way the state collects the sales tax and remits back to us. Is that correct? Yes, uh, yes, that is correct. And thank you, Alderman, um, for clarifying that. You know, I do understand the questions around CTA, but uh, to Alderman Thompson's point, this is something by state statute that we're just collecting on behalf of CTA. It is not discretionary. Um, and because we have collected higher than budgeted, you know, that is the request uh, with which I have come before you today. But, okay, yeah. and, and I, I, I mean, I have concerns with CTA like everyone else. And I think I, I just want to make sure though, that I, you know, it's, this isn't, I, I'm with you chair. I mean, I, I don't know if this is the right uh, venue or the way in which we can go about it. So I, I, I'll follow your lead on this chair um, okay. and, and we can have another hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Alderman Riley and Alderman Napolitano. And, and I just want to be very brief. Alderman Thompson's correct. That's exactly how the city's relationship with the transit tax. Can't hear you, so Brandon. Can't hear him. All right, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Um, I just wanted to reiterate that Alderman Thompson's correct in his uh, explanation of how the tax is collected and distributed. But let's also remember the legislature knew well enough to make that be subject to city council appropriation. So had they never intended for us to be a part of that conversation, we would not have been. Uh, it would have been a direct transfer. And so again, I, I understand this unique circumstance where there's an abundance of money that, that the legislature says must go to CTA. I just think that the CTA, when they're receiving additional monies should be front and center to explain to us how those will be spent, especially given all the challenges we're seeing with the transit system right now. Um, so yes, Alderman Thompson's correct, but we're built into that process and I would argue for a reason. Um, thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Alderman Riley. Alderman Napolitano. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just like to be held present for the role. Okay, uh, have you down for quorum. Alderman Villegas. Uh, I have you down as added to the quorum, but I see your hand up. So uh, you have a question. Alderman Villegas. Um, no, Madam Chair, that was just wanted to be added to the quorum. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, so this is what I would ask. I would ask for a vote approving this um, measure today. And as I uh, stated, 
Um, we will hold this. Someone else wants to speak? Alderman Sawyer. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, before you call this, I just wanted to have a question because I, I share my colleagues' concerns and, and out of respect for the chair, uh, I, I, I think there's a possibility that this may get voted down and it's not our intention to do that. Our intention is to have CTA come before us and explain this to us. And I know it's always easier to ask for forgiveness than ask for permission, but we need CTA to come before us to explain this. And uh, before you call it for a vote, I, I, I'm just asking one last time, would it be prudent to hold this and continue this for CTA to come before us before we give a no vote uh, possibly on this matter? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Alderman Sawyer. Um, Susie, before I uh, you know, make some suggestions on this and opinion on this, what is the, um, is there a timing factor in terms of when this money has to be turned over to them? Um, it is for year end. Um, so as you saw in the ordinance, we're asking for it to be effective December 1st. I think that, um, you know, if the goal is, is Say that again, I'm sorry, I didn't hear um, So we're trying to do this for year end. Um, which is why we are, so the request here is for the increase as well as, and in the um, appropriation amendment is the request to make it retroactive to December 1st, um, so that we are collecting it uh, as part of our year end uh, numbers. And so, you know, I do ask that, you know, if we have to have CTA, uh, you know, but that we could still pass it this month so that we do. All right, do so this is what for. I'm gonna recommend. I recommend that we take a recess and you get on the phone and call Dorval Carter or whoever is available at CTA and have them join this meeting. Um, we'll take, and if they are unable to uh, join us here today, uh, we will table this matter until the next time they can join us. So uh, we'll- think, Oh, sorry, I just had, I had my hand up, Chairman, sorry. Um, as soon as I finish speaking- I'm, I'm sorry. Call on you. Um, and so if we can take a 10 minute um, recess on this matter, I would recommend that we do so. Alderman Garza. Yeah, and I apologize. I just thought you were gonna go off. Um, yeah, I just, I think it's really important. Thank you for asking for Dover Carter to be here. Um, you know, one of the things I forgot to mention is he just got a 30% raise. He went from like $260,000 to $300,000 a year while his members are suffering in the trenches. So I thank you for saying that. I appreciate it. Um, he should be here. Thank you. So um, I want to take a five minute recess, um, Susie, and yes. get uh, or IGA or somebody get uh, President Carter on the phone to see if he can join this meeting. And if not, we will have to recess until Tuesday, maybe at one or two o'clock. I have to check my schedule. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna make some calls now. All right, so we will stand at ease for five minutes. And thank you. Okay, I'm calling the uh, Committee on Budget and Government Operations back to order uh, from our recess. Um, we are not able to get CTA uh, today. So this item, item number one on the agenda, we will hold until our meeting uh, on Tuesday, January 25th at 2 p.m. I do want to conclude with the item. That's the second item on our agenda today. Uh, which is an ordinance introduced by Alderman Michelle Harris of the 8th Ward approving the transfer of funds within the City Council Committee on Committees and Rules for the year 2021. Alderman Harris, are you with us? Yes, I am. Um, okay. um, I'm just um, transferring funds between accounts for the end of the year. Okay, so this transfers, my understanding, $5,500 from funds 0157, $49.74 from fund 0700, and $1,760 
$1,760 from fund 0197, which is a total of $7,309.74 to pay for materials and supplies and graphics and designs. Yes, that's correct. Okay, is there a motion to recommend approval of item number two on the agenda by the affirmative vote of all members present for the roll call? Riley moves to pass. Chairman Kwong. Kwong. Thank you. Alderman Riley so moves. Hearing no objection, so ordered. The due pass recommendation of the ordinance will be reported out at the next city council meeting on Wednesday, January 26th. There being no further business before the committee, we will recess until Tuesday. January 25th, uh, 2022 at two o'clock PM. And we'll send out information on the Zoom. Everyone have a great Tuesday.